Welcome to Baby Babble. My name is Sarah Zelensky. I am 15 weeks pregnant and I am bringing to you a weekly IGTV series where I am sharing with you my pregnancy journey as a first time mom about fitness, nutrition. I'm also sharing about my cravings and everything that I've learned along the way. So this is episode three, which is crazy. Baby is the size of a pear. I cannot believe it. I'm starting to show a little bit, which is super exciting. My dog Callie's going to just bark now. So, hey, did you chill? Did you chill out? So I am going to be sharing so much information with you guys this week. I had some really amazing comments from you guys, what you wanted me to cover. So I wrote everything down. I really appreciate when I put up my stories, asking you guys what you want me to talk about. It helps me get inspiration so I can come here and provide you with the best value ever. So I had a really busy morning and did my workout. So I'm still a little bit out of breath. So I'm going to take a sip of this real quick. This is the new uh, flow water. It's the new collagen water. This is the blood orange. I haven't tried this flavor yet. So Bear with me. I'm actually going to try it for the first time here. Mm. Oh my gosh. What does that taste like? It tastes like a starburst. That is so good. So this has 10 grams of protein in it. I love it. So good. Hello, I'm seeing everybody jumping on. What's going on? Okay, so we are going to start with first, the first things first. If you watched my stories this morning, you would have seen what has been happening with me. So I've been experiencing what's called round ligament pain. If you are watching this live with me or watching it afterwards, please let me know in the comments if you've ever experienced this. So round ligament pain is like this pain that comes from your uterus as your uterus is growing and it just feels like this stabbing insane pain. And I'm telling you, I love having all my girls in my August Mamas group. It's a chat pod we have for all of us that are working out. and. Oh my, I went in there and I was like, God, I think I'm dying. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like my stomach was in so much pain. I also, mind you, did something really stupid. I had a lot of energy and I ran upstairs on the bed and then I did a, a tumble roll and I like got super lightheaded. Brock's like, I don't think you should be doing that when you're pregnant. I'm like, no, nah, probably shouldn't be. And I'm laying down on my, on my back, going to go to bed, which also you're not supposed to do, by the way. I'm really great. I'm great pregnancy goals. I'm just a child, okay? Child with a child inside me. So I'm laying on the bed, and all of a sudden I'm just like, ah! I'm like screaming. I'm just like, oh my gosh! And I'm like, Brock, Brock, I don't know if I'm, I, I don't know if I'm okay. I honestly was freaking out. I had no idea what was going on with me. And he's just like, oh, you're fine. And then I was like, okay, I'm good. And then I felt like I was gonna have to sneeze, and I was so scared to sneeze because I'm like, I know if I sneeze, it's gonna hurt. It's kind of like, <laughs> you know, when you do a really good ab workout and someone makes you laugh, you're like, don't make me laugh, or like you do a really good ab workout and you're like, I don't want to sneeze or anything because everything just like tenses up. So I, I felt it and was worried that if I sneezed, that it would hurt again. And I had a huge sneeze, and honestly, I screamed bloody murder it hurts so freaking bad and so apparently some people get it some people don't get round ligament pain like seeing some of you guys were saying that like you have had it um and which is super uncomfortable but i said to brock i'm like oh my gosh like that was the worst pain ever i have no idea what it is and when i went into my group chat with my girls they're like oh like that's normal like your round ligament pain a couple people mentioned it could be braxton uh braxton hicks i think it's called but that usually comes a little more closer to um, like your 20 weeks time, but I'm feeling the, the, I'm feeling like these little contractions, like it hurts a lot. So there was that. And then this is, this is Brock's reaction. My so caring husband, so wonderful, just the best man in the world. He goes, Oh no, call the doctor. We're having a preemie. And I looked at him. I was like, do you understand what's happening inside my body? I'm growing a life for you. Could you please give me a little bit of satisfaction and be caring for like two seconds? He's like, oh, we're having a preemie. I'm like, that's not funny. It really fucking hurts. But I've been finding just this week, since I hit about four, 14 weeks and like four days, I've been getting it every single day and it just hits you like a ton of bricks right in the stomach. These are good signs though, even though it hurts. It just means that baby is growing and my uterus is growing. So I really should start popping and showing like consistently. I definitely can see a bit of a bump now when I sit and I'm like, what happened here? Sit and look down. Um, but uh, nothing too, too crazy. So next thing I was going to kind of talk about with you guys, <laughs> mentioned about Brock, obviously. So heartburn has been really bad. I've been having the pregnancy brain, little things like putting the peanut butter in the freezer for no reason or like forgetting where I'm putting stuff or 
like forgetting what I'm doing, like going walking up the stairs, meaning like, why am I up here and having to walk back downstairs to figure things out, like doing that a lot more consistently or getting off track, not being as focused. So I've really had to write everything down. So when I get up in the morning and I start my day and I'm getting ready to, you know, plan what I want to do, what I want to get my workout in, what I want to help rock with some stuff. He needs me to help him start with the family stuff. So kind of separating things from like business, personal. Okay. So business, personal being Sarah and then family. So making sure that I'm getting all three of those things done every day and kind of having three different goals of it. Hi, everyone. Um, have different goals off of it. So I can kind of check those things off for myself every day. So like when I do get sidetracked or when I'm randomly stuck on baby lists, that's where my registry is and just throwing things on there consistently, I can remember the different things I have to do. And I kind of have a pad of paper almost like everywhere in the house, like downstairs, upstairs. I have one in the bathroom because I do a lot of thinking in the bathroom. And I'll just like write things down as they come to my mind so that I don't forget about them. And that's been super helpful. Okay, cool. Um, another thing that I've been having, which is new, and some of you guys have seen this, is I've been waking up in the mornings. Hey, beautiful. I've been waking up in the mornings and having insane headaches and like even in the evenings before I go to bed I use magnesium citrate which has helped a lot with getting to sleep I do have a code for it now which is super cool I got a 15% off uh, for calm natural calm which is a Canadian magnesium company like that's sick because I use it all the time and love it so that's been helpful but in the mornings I've been like struggling like it feels like I drank like I had a good day at the beach and I really threw back the threw back the Palm Bays or threw back the Coronas or threw back the oh my god what are my favorite ones there the White Claws like that's what it feels like the next day so that's kind of what I have in the morning I find if I get my pre-workout in like right away <laughs> that that's like the best possible thing for me uh, for my program I'm starting on Monday I'm gonna talk about that yeah I'm so happy that you asked it's gonna be awesome so I'm finishing up my current program that's the next thing I was gonna talk about anyways I'm actually finishing up my current program right now. I'm doing a nine week program that they actually advertise saying like this isn't a program you really should do when you're pregnant. But what it really means by that is more so like this is a program that you don't want to just start if you've never done anything for health and fitness before. So I was personal trainer before for a long time. I had my own personal training business. I was a, a good life fitness manager. I did boot camps. I have a kin degree. Um, I have like a strength and conditioning certification, all these different things. So Honestly, hi, Callie, girlfriends. I'm, I'm literally talking about what you asked me to speak about right now. So you're good. So basically what I've been doing is I've been doing this program, which has a control track. My girlfriend, Brittany Helco, trying to call me. She doesn't know I'm live. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So I have a control track that's on a wall here. And the nice thing with it is that when you're pregnant, as you're moving through the different trimesters, now, guys, this is all my personal experience. I do not have any certifications in um, personal training specifically for prenatal. This is all my personal experience and also the programs that I use on a, on a consistent basis, okay? So the programs that I have to use, I have a prenatal one. I have, um, I have like prenatal yoga. I also have like postnatal and it also comes with meal plans with everything. So for me, I had no idea where to start, but I knew that Elise, who's one of the trainers that does the programs that I'm doing, um, she basically runs through like it goes through trimester one, two, and three. So I started integrating those programs into my current fitness routine so that I would learn how to adapt and how to change different movements. Cause I'm someone that loves to lift things up, put them down. I love to work really hard. I love doing my burpees. I love like really pushing to my fitness, the different fitness levels. And the biggest thing is that having this control track from this new program has allowed me to modify so much. So like in your second trimester, it's encouraged for you not to be laying on the ground as much on your back and doing like certain weightlifting moves and spending a long period of time on your back. So I can do a lot of those same types of exercises now standing using my control track, which is so nice. So yes, I did not start my period. It was the best thing ever. <laughs> That's the funniest comment. So that's something that I've been loving about using the control track. I just, fin I'm finishing that nine week program up this week. And then on Monday, I'm starting a brand new one. So I'm going to be doing a couple different things. A bunch of girls are starting fresh on Monday with me. So that means that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a program actually that's going to bring me back to when I was actually preparing to go into a bodybuilding competition. I'm also hosting a three week tread program and I'm also hosting the nine week program that I just finished as well. So that's all going to be starting on Monday, which I'm very, very excited about. 
out if you're interested in learning more about what that looks like. I like to explain it as like the Netflix of fitness because you get access to all these different workout programs. There's over 75 different programs. Every program comes with a meal plan. Uh, you get me as a coach for a year, stuff like that. But anyways, I could talk about that forever. So we'll just move on from that. But for me, like one of Callie's questions was how do I stay so motivated and how do I stay so, so disciplined? Um, when it comes to doing my programs every single day. And what I was thinking about was the fact that, you know, like when it comes down to it, like my brain is my biggest muscle. Okay. So my brain is the biggest thing that controls what I do with my life. It controls what I do with like my decisions. And when it comes down to it, like you have to use your brain every day to make conscious decisions, decisions to do something good for yourself or do something bad. And if you're feeling like shit, right? And like for me in the morning, every morning you're waking up with a headache. Every morning I don't want to eat until like 12. But the thing is for me, I have to make these decisions where I'm like, okay, like I really, I know that it's important for me to move my body. I know if I take my plant-based pre-workout because there's quercetin in that, it's going to help me relieve my headaches in the morning. I know that I can choose to feel miserable or I can choose to push through something that's difficult and make myself feel much better. Because the thing is that you may feel like shit in one moment, right? And by not doing something, you may continue to feel that way. But by trying to do something different, even if it's challenging or even if it's hard, that's using your brain to keep yourself like focused on your mindset of like where you're going, that you're 10 times more likely to feel better after even trying to move your body. If you have to modify, you have to go slow, you have to do anything like it's way better for you to do that than not to do anything at all, if that makes sense. But that's like, that's the biggest thing for me. And like something else that's really important too. And I say this to a lot of my clients is that if you're really struggling with like getting up in the morning and doing something like put your why at your bed you know what i mean like put your why like right at the corner of your of your bed or when you go to sleep at night because when you go to bed you really need to have like everyone's like oh you need a morning routine like yes morning routines are great and they're super helpful but having an evening routine is just as important like what is the last thing you're thinking about before you go to bed at night to help you be motivated for when you wake up in the morning to make sure you're focused on your goals so for me it's like you know i go to bed at night with my husband we always talk about like, what we're doing the next day what our plans are like we're such planners and like big dreamers and we support each other in our goals so for us it's like i'm like you know i really want to get up at this time tomorrow even if my head's really hurting or x y and z but it's like my reason for me is to live a healthy life my reason for me is so that i can feel stronger my reason for me is so that i can have a, a really healthy pregnancy and bounce back stronger like i want to make sure that also with my own personal fitness goals right now is that I don't want my only physical transformation over the next six months to just be my bump growing. I want to put on lean muscle. I want to see myself get stronger. I want to see my endurance get better. I want to see my heart rate come down more through my exercise. I want to be able to contract my core better and have better control over my pelvic floor. You know, like the thing is that you still need to set consistent goals no matter what's happening, right? Like it doesn't matter that you're pregnant. You need to find your, your new reasons and set new goals. And it's the same thing for anybody that's just like, this like, I haven't been doing anything at all and, and you're pregnant or maybe you were really fit before and then you just stopped or you haven't done anything at all. You can still start if you're pregnant and have never done anything before, but I'm not going to tell you to do the program. I'm going to start on Monday. I'm going to tell you to go like, like, like start slow, but don't stop right and tell you to monitor your heart rate and tell you to like you know don't you don't have to commit to the whole program where it's like go on monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday and like don't skip a day i'll say you know what let's start with just maybe two three times a week and get you into it let's get you outside going for walks let's focus on your nutrition let's really help you with this with starting you out and getting more water in your body so i think it really depends where you're at but having your why out in front of you like for example one of my girls i was like what do you have by your bed table before you go to bed at night she's like oh i had like have my alarm clock i have my book that i read my glasses and they charge my phone i'm like okay cool like but what's your why right and for her it's that she wants to be able to be there for her kids and she doesn't want to get out of breath um one of her big goals was being able to take her groceries from the car to her front doorsteps and not be out of breath that's a huge measurable goal, right? So it's like, okay, well, if your kids are your why and you want to be able to play with them and you want to be able to do regular things, put a picture of your kids beside your bed every single night, but you know, I need to plug my phone in, um, but only you, oops, only you know that that picture that's there is for your reason. It's your why, right? Anyone else that sees it, they're going to see that's your family. 
but your reason why is your family and that's why it's there. So that's the thing that's going to make you want to get your feet hit the floor in the morning to be able to, so you get your workouts in and things like that, right? Maybe for me, it's that I want to be able to rock a killer freaking bikini this summer with the bump out, my arms flexing, lots of muscles, be like, yeah, I'm a fit mom. Like, I want that. I do. Like, I want to do that this summer and I don't want my bump to be the only thing that's what's growing and I want to feel strong and capable. So Maybe I'm going to pick the bikini that I want off the website that I want and put it there to keep myself kind of motivated. Like you pick and choose what you want, right? To keep yourself motivated, to make you do the things during the day. Okay, cool. Oh, I am doing, this is going to be fun. So you do not have to be a coach or client of mine to do this challenge. I'm going to start on Monday a booty challenge because if you know me, I love me some booty and we are going to do a 30 day challenge. Okay. Three zero. I'm going to give away one of my glow up sweaters as one of the prizes. You have to enter the challenge every, for the whole 30 days to do it. And we are doing a hundred squats every single day for 30 days straight. Okay. And we're going to take pictures of our booties before take pictures of our booties afterwards. And everyone that completes the challenge, we are going to take like the top, like, I don't know, We'll see what we do. I don't think I'm going to do it based off results, but I'll be like everyone that starts and finishes and actually completes it and checks in. We'll have something to get to give away at the end, which I'm pumped about. We'll do like a raffle or something, but that's going to be really fun. So I encourage you, if you want to jump in with that with us, anybody can do it. It's going to be really fun. We'll have check-ins every single week on social media. Even I complete my booty challenge. I'll make a little like story thing, which will be fun. Um, and then, okay, next thing. Baby registry. So I am using Babylist. The reason I'm using Babylist, and I would love to know if you're on here live or watching as a recording, can you, um, yes, but you don't have to, no, you don't have to do them all at once, Ramona. You can totally do them throughout the day. As long as you get 100 in, think about it, 10, stand up every hour, do 10, stand up another hour, do 10, maybe do 20. So totally do them at your own pace. As long as you get them done the day, you're still getting the movement in, right? Um, okay, so I'm doing baby list and I looked at a bunch of different ones. The reason I chose baby list one is I have a lot of friends that are in the US and I have friends that are in Canada and I wanted to give people the opportunity to kind of get something from everywhere. And the way that it works is that you actually put something that's on there and then it shows you like 10 different places that you can get that you can get it which is crazy. So, and also I haven't shared my registry yet on here. I'm going to because people have been asking for it and I've had people sending me stuff. I've been getting duplicates of things and I just don't want to have to send things back. Um, so if you do want to get something from me, I will post it, but I'm not also don't want anyone to get me anything, but I'm just saying, cause people do send me stuff already and I'm getting duplicates of stuff. So I just want to make sure if you want to, I'll put it up, but there's been some pretty funny things I have to put on there. Cause like you go through and it gets you to choose the things that you like. It actually got me to identify myself as Christian Bell. Uh, sorry, Kristen Bell. That's who I identify as as a celebrity when it comes to being a cool mom. Um, and then I picked that I'm team green. So we're not finding out the gender. We'll see what happens. Everyone's pissed at me. Everyone's like, you need to find out the gender. Would love to know what your thoughts are. If you think that we're going to have a boy or a girl. I know it's not really easy to show because I'm not really showing at all right now. Because usually people tell about, like where your belly's placed. I would love to know what your thoughts are and if you think that we're having a boy or a girl, but that's been difficult trying to pick the registry because you're like, see all these really cute pink things and cute blue things. And I'm just like, I want all the pink and blue stuff, but I'm just not sure. So it's been kind of difficult to pick things, but there's stuff I never thought that I was going to need that I've been putting on my list. Like there's like a, a nose booger sucker thing, hundred and heartbeat. When I first, my first one was 174, second one was 164, and I think the last one was 100 and, I think that would have been the last one I got, or maybe it was less than that. I think it was like 164, 154 was the last one that I got, but it's been like dropping. So I'm super excited, I'm super, I'm just super excited about it. Um, so like it's little things like nose booger suckers, are things that we've been getting. But my sister's heart rate was super high in hers and she's having a boy, so I don't know. Like everyone, we don't know, right? But, so my sister, so my sister showed me a bunch of stuff on her registry and she went on there and just added a bunch of stuff for me. But like, there's like nose booger sucker outer things and you get with like a hose. And everyone's like, no, seriously, you're gonna want that? And I'm like, oh, like, <laughs> gross. So I've been getting stuff like that. Um, also, I have this, which I'm super excited about. I shared about this on my stories this week. I have been insanely trying to get away from harsh chemicals and like different products and things like that. I don't know if anyone has heard of this. I've never heard of it. My auntie in Nova Scotia 
just reached out to me and told me about it as she found out that I was pregnant, but it's called Norwex. So I just had this sent to me in the mail. So Norwex is an Enviro cloth. So this one is the microfiber cloth and this one is the window cloth. So basically you can clean your entire house and get rid of like 99.9% .9 of bacteria and germs with water in this cloth. What? So I'm really excited about that. I'm actually, they do parties and stuff. So the next Tuesday I have um, someone hosting a party for me where they're going to teach me everything about it. But I'm super excited to clean my house with this stuff this week. If you've heard of this, please let me know what your thought is. Um, your sister got you into it. Just got your box yesterday. Oh my gosh. Okay. I've heard such good freaking things because the other thing that I've been using is I've been using this app and the app is called EWG. So basically the app is like a screen little app you can get for your phone, okay? And you can like scan your products. So you can scan like your makeup, you can scan your, um, your, your lotions, you can scan everything and it's gonna tell you like what the paraben levels are, the toxicity levels of the product, um, the different ingredients in it that are harmful for you. And yo, I threw out like almost everything I heard. You've you've heard of it and good things, but never tried it. Yeah, so I've just found out about it, really excited about it. Um, I'm gonna have a party on Tuesday, I guess, next week. I don't even know what that means, but I think it's like kind of like those legging parties people do. Um, oh my gosh, and she wasn't supposed to send me this, but she found I was having baby. Look, it's a baby brush. It looks like an elefante, and because it's I'm team green, it's gray. And the elephant, look. I love it. So you can like use it for like the massaging the shampoos in their hair and like getting the dirt up their body. So it's like this super soft little silicone. So anyways, my husband, of course, when this came in the mail, was like, what the fuck is this? And what are you buying more things of? And I'm just like, you buy beer, I buy products for baby and Zoe. Okay, so that's how it's going to work. But I'm really excited to learn more about this. Um, she said that she can you, you can use it on multiple different surfaces. So I don't really know a lot about it. I just know that it's really safe for children. Oh my God, it says all the things on the back of it. You can use it dry or use it damp and wet. Yep, helps get, yeah, removes up to 99.9% .9 of bacteria from all surfaces. And also there's, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And all this is recycled paper as well. You guys know I'm all about saving the earth. Everything save the earth, okay? So... Um, there's that. So that's happening next week. Happening on, I wrote down my day. What day am I doing that? I think it's the 9th. I think it's next Tuesday. I think that's the 9th. I have to look at my calendar over there. So I'm going to be doing that. Um, and then what else? Oh, this. My friend Shannon got me this. It is baby, let's just say I couldn't help myself on here. It is a baby shaker bottle, a little weight, a hundred pound kettlebell and a sweatband. Oh yeah. I'm so pumped about this. And she got one for her daughter so that our babies can work out together. She did my um, Lift 4 program, which is a weightlifting program through her entire pregnancy. And she named her daughter after one of the girls in the program named So Light, which is pretty cool. So she got those for me, which I'm pumped about. And then what else? Okay, last thing I wanna to talk to you guys about on here. Actually, there's two things I wanna talk about. Um, Number one, now that I am 15 weeks pregnant, the it's so cute, right, Callie? My goodness. So the baby can start feeling my emotions now, which is very terrifying, okay? Mm. It's like candy, actually. There's no sugar in these, by the way. It's just infused with the oil and essence of the plant, and this is blood orange. So the, okay, so the baby can feel, the baby can feel my emotions, can feel my moods and can start hearing my voice. So I was reading about it last night cause like I'm always concerned about like, oh, well, I want my husband to be really involved and I want him to kind of hear all the different things that are happening. So I've been like doing intentional things where I will like hold my belly and be like, I love you. I love you. You are smart. You are going to be athletic. You are going to do all the things and blah, blah, blah. And I will like talk to the baby and like rub, it, rub the belly here. And I also mas massaging my transverse abdominals, trying to like all the pressure and stress that my stomach's having but I feel like I'm always just trying to like talk to the baby I don't know if it's a boy or a girl but I'm always just like you are smart and beautiful and strong and intelligent and you were all like you were healthy and all the things and I love rubbing my belly and saying those things and I also have a bunch of kids books that I actually like if I'm kind of like 
in a weird mood, I'll like pull out a kid's book and I will read out loud like a page or two of the kid's books. I don't know. It says it's just good for you to read to your baby, even when they're like in your belly because they can't hear your voice. And apparently their heart rate can also... Um, will also spike and it keeps their heart working because your heart's a muscle, right? So when you're talking to your baby or when I'm talking like this, like baby can hear me right now talking about talking about babies. So this is great, but it gets their heart rate up and that exercises their heart the same way when you exercise and you exercise, exercise your heart, right? Which is super important. Um, the apps that we're using are Hi Mommy. It's my favorite one. It's pretty basic unless you get the paid version, but it's a Hi Mommy app I love. Um, it gives you like a little thing every day where like the baby will talk to you and be like, hi mommy, you might be experiencing this. Or it'll tell Brock like, hi daddy, you should go buy mommy a bra because her boobs are probably getting bigger. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, and then there is also like, I can like send Brock things on there, like how I'm feeling because he's connected with the hi daddy app. So I can send him a message and be like, I'm hungry. And then put like notes and it'll be like, hi daddy, mommy wants to tell you how she's feeling. She's really hungry today. She mentioned that she wants to cinnamon buns <laughs> it'll text me like seriously <laughs> Sorry. so that app's really really fun i also use what to expect every single week because what to expect will actually tell me like the size of the baby like how it's a pair this week um and you can look ahead and see what your symptoms are going to look like and it gives a very detailed description of like what your symptoms are like which is pretty cool and what you can expect and then it breaks everything down into detail too about like what everything is so like I'm able to go into it and it'll say like, hey, if you're experiencing insomnia, if you're experiencing um, the, um, what did I say this is called again? See, baby brain, um, the round ligament pain or things like that, this is what it is and this is when you should contact your doctor. So it's been really amazing. Hi, Amanda. It's been really amazing for me just like understanding like the processes and the symptoms that I'm going through by using this app. Um, Another one that we love is the bump, which is really good for information. The baby center is where I pick the baby names. So in baby center, you can go in there. You can actually, it's like, it's like Tinder for baby names. You're like, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And you can save them. You can choose if they are, um, if they are a female name or a male name or both. So there's a couple different names that Brock and I like. Um, that we've kind of gone back and forth with. We haven't, we, I don't know. I might share a couple of them with you guys. Like, I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. It's, it's weird because that's one of the things I want to talk about when it comes to like unsolicited opinions is that there's been so many women in my, um, in my August mama's group where they're just like, I keep sharing my baby name to people and people are just like, that's stupid or I hate that. And they're like mean about it. And it's like, if you're worried about judgment and if you care what other people's opinions are of what you're going to name your child, then don't talk about it. But if you don't care, talk about it right? See, for me, it's like, I just don't even want the messages from people being like, this is what that name means or this. Cause like, I just don't even want to deal with that. Right. So like, I'm kind of like, I don't think I'm going to even talk about it. Um, but we do have a couple, we have two or three girl names picked up. Okay. I will share one. I love the name Skylar for a girl and for a boy. Love it. Absolutely love it. Brock says he's fine with it. One of his best guy friends from Saskatchewan's name was Skylar. That's one of the names that we're like, he's not crazy about it. I love it. Um, but we, like, honestly, one month we love a name and then the next month we hate it. So chances are baby's going to be just named like on the spot as soon as like birth happens is kind of what I'm thinking. But just feel, I just feel like if you struggle with people giving you unsolicited opinions about baby names or things like that, then just don't share with anybody. Keep it to yourself, right? It's a nice name, right? I think it's nice because I initially was like, I want girls that have the name S and I want boys that have the name B, but it's super hard for us to find male names like the name B that are like really strong. Like Brock is a strong man name. So it's hard to kind of match that name if that makes sense. Um, and it's a cute name, right? And the other one I really liked, I liked Abigail for a while. We kind of threw that one out the window. There's a couple, there's a couple we've liked. Like, um, what are some other ones? I liked Kiera. Brock doesn't like Kiera because you can call him Kiki or things like that. Anyways, it's going to be such a process. And then for boys, we've gone through a lot of boys' names. I can't even like, I can't even share the boys' names because we were so back and forth with them. And Brock will be like, you can't talk to people about our boys' names because I don't know. He thinks we're having a girl anyways. <laughs> so we kind of talk mostly about girl names and anything. Um, and then the last thing, da, da, da. oh, the eating thing. I did really want to talk about eating really quickly. Probably my biggest pet peeve right now, I'm sorry, my hair's been bugging me. 
Probably my biggest pet peeve right now is when people tell me I'm pregnant and I'm eating for two. It bugs me so much because I feel like this is the one time that people, when they get pregnant, they're just like, this is the one time where I have the excuse to just go all out and go ham and eat whatever I want. And it's not like, yes, listen to your body. Yes, 110%. You should just like, if you feel like you want to eat something, eat it. Like if you're hungry, you're hungry. But at the same time, it's like the calorie difference between eating eating what you're normally eating versus when you're pregnant is about 500 calories and then you also need to monitor based on what you're eating like it's basically like a handful of nuts is the way that it is but people think like oh i have to double my carbs and double my fats and double my proteins and double everything and it's like you don't like you really don't and that's why i love the programs that i have because i really didn't know where to start and excuse me acid reflux is the thing and then when I went and I looked at it, right, it actually would say like, this is how much how much you have to adjust your diet by. And I do my portion control system with my containers that I use so I know how much fruit and how much vegetables and how much protein that I'm getting in throughout the day. And I track into my little app that I have on my phone, which makes me more consistent, which I really, really love. But I also like to, now that I'm pregnant, put it into the My Fitness Pal app just so I can track my um, micronutrients and my, like, my minerals and things like that because I like to make sure that my iron is at a higher level um, so I don't take an iron supplement. I don't want to. So I I try to do that with like really getting my leafy greens in and things like that and different meats to me but I honestly struggle with meat right now I eat a lot of um I eat plant-based most of the time right so but iron is one of the main things I like to watch too side note to the question above um oh was there was there a question that I missed um do you have any dreams about being pregnant before uh oh my gosh before my big fat positive I love that I love it you know the um that you know the terms I had to learn the freaking terms in the group people be putting all these different three letters in there I'm like what the heck does that mean do I have any dreams about being pregnant oh my gosh it's a really good question I think I did I think I did I really think I did I know that one of my big I've had dreams about having children not so, I don't think I did about being pregnant so much, but I did about, um, about having children. Uh, oh, she did ask a question about, let me look. Oh, so weird question. Uh, did you notice anything when you were like first pregnant before you even peed? Oh my gosh. Yes. I haven't videotaped. Um, I was actually sitting right here. I was on a work call with my girls and we were like working silently. I felt like shit. Like um, and my boobs were hurting the whole week before. So basically one week after conception, my boobs were hurting. And I went to lunch with my girlfriend, Shannon, uh, who bought me the, who bought me, who bought me this. <laughs> um, and I was like, my boobs hurt a lot. And I was like holding your baby. We're sitting at Pure Kitchen, which is my favorite vegan restaurant here in Ottawa. And um, she's like, you could be pregnant. I'm like, I could be. I'll find out in like two, three weeks. But I'm like, I just would have conceived like last week. Like that's pretty early. She's like, everyone's body's different. So like I, my boobs were hurting right away. Um, I was having headaches and then I wasn't really sleeping that great. But my boobs were really painful. I remember telling my sister, she's like, there's no way that you have pregnancy symptoms right now. You probably are just sore up in your workout. But when I was sitting with the girls, I was like feeling like shit. And I'd had drinks the day before. And I was like, I'm like, I can't be hungover. I didn't have that much to drink. Like Brock and I had a couple of beers, went for a walk, like wasn't too crazy. And then all of a sudden I was like, I have never felt like this ever. And I was actually had Bailey's and coffee. I had Bailey's and coffee in my um, coffee that morning. And I, w I went and I just spit it out and threw it out. And I was like, I have to be pregnant. And then I drove to go get a flow water. And I drove to the nearest apartment store. And I got a stick. And I was like, I, that's why I wouldn't pee on the stick. It was that same day. And I knew it. But yeah, I, my boobs were hurting like crazy before. Um, and I, I, I was thinking maybe I was or maybe, maybe I'm not, which is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of that, that's kind of it for me. It I. <laughs> I really struggled when I was like doing my little science experiments and peeing on the sticks and stuff. Like I just dropped off a bunch of my, um, my, uh, my ovulation ships to my girlfriend. He's trying to get pregnant right now. And that was probably the hardest part of trying to get pregnant was having to pee on those stupid sticks and just obsessing over like when your peak was and stuff. That was so shitty. I hated that part. Um, but I think that's all I wanted to cover with you guys. I th Oh, I have been craving red wine. I said from the very beginning, I was like, all of a sudden I didn't want to drink wine anymore. And now that it's beautiful and sunny outside, I actually registered for my boater's license the other day. I just spit on you guys. 
I registered for my boater's license because we go on the boat all the time and I'm the only one that can't drink now. So the guys want me to have one so that they can have drinks in the boat. So I'm going to have a boater's license now, which is great. And it really is more difficult to not be able to have drinks when it's beautiful and sunny out or when you're having spaghetti dinner at your parents place and my mom makes a mean spaghetti and could not have red wine so that was awful um it is quite a journey you're so welcome this has been really fun i feel like it's gonna be something really fun to look back at um but there's a lot of fun stuff happening here in the next couple weeks so make sure you guys tune in and make sure you comment down below after i post this video up and share what your favorite thing was so other people can see if it is a good thing for them um and that's basically it, you guys so thank you so much for joining me and i will be sharing more details about my booty challenge coming up and my new group that is kicking off on monday which i'm so excited for oh top is by Montiel and my extra high rise leggings are from Lulu obsessed with them just got these in the mail um and they're super super high I'm gonna try and not buy any um pregnancy clothes that is the goal is to just keep wearing like the stuff that I love and just buy and size up and move around and stuff is kind of what I want to do but that's it for me guys I hope you have an amazing Thursday and going into your weekend happy Friday Eve and we'll chat soon bye guys thanks